if record. Oh. And so we actually had two amazing calls today, I feel like. The first one, the camera edit, yeah. and the second one, the Q&A one. Um, it's just, you know, too much information to process. But I feel like with uh, camera aids, it's actually the, we, like if we had a call with them in April, we wouldn't really know what- Yeah, the synergy do. would have been ridiculous, yeah. But like, it would be great, but we wouldn't know what to do because we didn't have all of these like Kaggle pieces that we've developed in like April, May, and June. And now we kind of have them, but it's the, the major challenge of connecting them and kind of like unbundling their workflow um, so maybe Matan, you, you can start with uh, the minutes document and sure. guide through it. No, I um, yeah, I did. Uh, I did not do the NLP one because I dropped into a, a racing class, a Zoom call with uh, John McDonald and amongst among and then my lo one of my local MPs. Really interesting talk about race and class. So I mixed up my day with several and I was going to have a call I, honestly my days have gone all back to like oh I'll just fill them full of webinars again and fill them full of corona Y calls it's nice though it's nice to see people again because there's been last there few were months a lot of people around yeah between those cool calls like 50 people joined I think yeah that the uh, the QA one is is was actually a hot pot QA uh, that I shared um, I was starting to I found that before right the day before I started working with Corona Y and I, I was super interested in it, um, but then I had to table it because, um, you know, it wasn't really appropriate for like task VT and, and other stuff. So um, I'm actually pretty excited that we're going to be working with that right now. Um, and obviously a lot of the work that we've done, we should be able to leverage. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you guys have that in front of you or do you want me to share the screen? Actually, if you want to share a screen so that the okay. screen is fine. I don't have the document. I don't think I'd have to go okay. find it. Uh, share screen. Okay. And you give him permission before we go through that loop. Yeah. yeah I have it on, on default. Okay. Uh, just let me know if it's working yep. or not. It, okay. Yeah. That's I can good. hear it. See it. Yeah. It's fine. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah, I felt, I mean, there was a lot of great content that we went over. Um, just personally, I felt like, um, like I was trying to multitask, which isn't great, you know, when you're, when you should be focused the entire time. Um, so, you know, going between taking notes and then paying attention again. So I figured it would be a good idea for us to uh, consolidate everything. Um, and then, and then uh, walk through, oh, what, so consolidate everything and then I thought rather than um, send everything to them piecemeal, um, do our best to get everything in one shot. Yeah. Make everybody's lives easier. Um, yeah, makes sense. Um, and then uh, just go through what materials we'll need to help them and then also to help us, um, you know, to find next steps and then just whatever else comes up during the call. Um, you know, it just, just, I guess, get into the habit of, um, well, you know, I, we're, we're getting to this, we've, or we've got to this point where the main focus is the literature, literature review uh, um, uh, interface. Um, so it's awesome. We've got something to focus on. Um, but um, I also feel, feel like, you know, something else that uh, we should let permeate the rest of CY is, is just try and have a central place, even though I know that's kind of crazy and I really don't have any idea how to do it, but especially for things like these, um, these really defined, well-defined uh, goals. Let's have a place that uh, everything is defined where we can have our, all of our research knowledge, so on and so forth. So, you know, some, some teams are using um, Notable, um, some using Google Docs. So, I mean, whatever you guys feel like is, is best. Um, yeah, Notion so. is, it seems to be the, the new kind of, Way I've got Notion. I've got Notion. I've just not been using it very much. And here's the trick, because it's kind of like complex to use and you have to dedicate time to structure it properly. That's yeah. why I think there is a learning curve to that alone. But I, I fully agree. Like for 
Camerata's uh, initiative, it's actually very, very clear what we have to do. It's, you know, basically taking their workflow yeah. that is well documented and unbundling that into specific, almost like services on Corona Y uh, yeah. platform. There's like, definitely, there's definitely a number of um, sub services of things that, you know, different teams have built or, you know, they've been from the Kaggle challenges or from from the infrastructure, like a lot of the things already exist to make this work for them. We just need to work out the details of how we need to serve their problem particularly and how to make sure it, what comes out is what they want at the end. Yeah. And so it, it's so definitely within remit of what we've got already. Yeah. That's, um, and, and I, I don't know, I, you know, I might go and, and listen to the call again um, you know, like a movie, you'll, you'll notice other things that you missed the first time. Um, but exactly that, um, d define the question, you know, how are we going to best help them? Um, and then also, um, you know, one of the things that came up during the call was, do we, do we, um, so, so I guess, uh, like we can go through the couple of questions that, we, that I put down here. Um, so I don't know if we should bother completing the training that they talked about to get access to the data, to their data set, or if we're just going to be able to push it to Dataverse and whether or not they're the same thing. Um, do, do you guys, um, uh, uh, do you guys, uh, know, know anything that clear that up for, the, for us or do you think we would have to ask them? So I think Salva actually reached out to them and asked them to, to upload the data set. Okay. Um, I think their data set that they sent to us is not complete. And that's, that was kind of the realization on the call when uh, I started asking for more, um, you know, extended version of that sheet. Yeah, I think, I think they assumed that we needed something tidy when what we don't, we don't actually need something tidy. We need the raw version of it yeah. because we need to fully understand the whole picture rather than... Right a curated version, which is great for like human reading, but we're not looking to human read it. We're looking to AI read it. So we're looking to understand the whole picture. And that's why we need to, we need to see what they're already outputting and make sure we can take and digest them. We need to work out if we can digest that output. And we also need to work out how we can emulate that output. Yes. Especially I see it as the synergy between because what they're basically telling is like, these are all the things we need to understand when we do it. And we're like, perfect, because we need to understand when we do a review, what needs to be seen. Now you've basically summarized that entire process for us, for your team and your general approach. And that's perfect for the user interface to be able to go, okay, now this is what you need. Now we need to work out how we can fill those, those bits of information in an automated NLP sense. Yeah, and actually, these columns are almost like separate tasks, right? Because yeah, uh, they're all separate elements, aren't they? Look for types of these, you know, you know, you're assessing this kind of, you know, that you're assessing different categories, and you're approaching, yeah, you'll approach them differently, or there'll be similarities, but there'll be a different, probably a different process to each one. Yeah, so to me, it sounds like um, the the end goal is ensemble of these different machine learning models that produce uh, specific columns for this, um, you know, process for them. So we can start from the ones that are the easiest. Um, things like, you know, uh, method, which is, I think is actually done already by Christine's team. Um, they've yeah. worked on the- at least, at least general terms. I don't know if they've got a specific, I don't know how specific they went because they've got like types of, um, you know the methods used but then they've got like sub methods you know sub subsections of each method as well so um i don't know how refined their 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 pipeline was for that but i know in principle they were you know is this a clinical study is this a random you know random you know whatever different types of research is i know they had some of that but we'd have to probably talk to alex and see what how how granular it went because I never really looked into the detail of that one. Yeah. So, um, Arthur, do you uh, did they share that document uh, that work their their workflow document? 
Yeah, actually, I have it. The only thing, I'm not sure if that's the latest one. Let me send it to the channel. And if that's not, they're just going to, uh, you know, send it a fresh one. Hold on. Uh, they also shared that um, evidence summary or something, right? Um, let me find that. There was a second document that looked like a PDF in browser that you could browse. Let's see. I've my problem right now is that I've got probably five thousand tabs open. <laughs> Only five thousand. It sounds like you're not yeah. even trying. You want to so. see mine? Let's <laughs> no. not. That's that not. Scary. I've got. I've got Wakana. I've got work, work, work on which manages my tabs. And if I look at that, <laughs> I have technically got. Uh, it's a competition. It's pretty tame right now. It's, so, it's, it's under 100 for the first time in a month. Well, because I have the actual separate uh, hidden browsers, and each of those yeah. have equally a uh, large amount of those. But yeah, so this is a document. This is the workflow that they shared previously. Um, yeah, here. Okay. Um, so basically what I was trying to get at, so I, I know like going into the call, I knew that um, my, my entire understanding was that they were trying to uh, classify uh, primary versus non-primary um, papers. But then obviously during the call, I realized that there's a lot more that they're trying to categorize. So really my, my question for them is, or what, I, what I'd like to find out, um, at the end of the day, what are the different um, targets or what are, all, what are the different categories? Is it, is it a label classification problem? Um, what, you know, how many different classes are we trying to categorize right now? Yeah. Um, so that we could start thinking about what kinds of models that we can use. Uh, the evidence summary. Okay, I think I, yeah, I think I have that now. Um, okay, so that, so that's one I, what I wanted to get at. And so I guess my question to you right now is, did you guys get, uh, were, were you guys able to pull that out of the meeting? Because um, I, I missed it if they, if they had um, talked about that more. Um, we haven't really, well, we asked uh, them for a full list of parameter or values. Uh, that they're using to categorize that. From my understanding, the very first step is the actual primary uh, research. Um, yeah, first we identify the primary studies and categorize them for basic study information. In stage two, we only annotate the included primary studies for more detailed study characteristics. So it's a two-step process for them. The first one is done already by the sum model that they haven't shared yet with us and they claim that it's 95% um, accurate, um, which is something that may be true, maybe not. And I, I'm pretty sure we'll be, be able fair, to- The 95% model is based, the 95% I think is only based on, is this primary research or is this not? Correct. Which is a very black and white question, which I feel like, I mean, I don't know enough about um, AI to say for certain, but I feel like that should be a fairly easy assessment because any basically anything that's not talking about specific a specific research that that organization that paper is talking about, if it's not that, it's something else. So, by the way, what is primary research by like definition? It's basically someone who's done the evidence evidence collection themselves in one form or another and assess the evidence directly, so they will have had patients or they will have had samples or they will actually have ha ha had worked in a laboratory environment there is primary research with primary like hands-on in some form or another either they will be a part of a clinical trial or anything that's an actually um anything that generates information and anything that generates data themselves rather than just using somebody else's sample set or using someone else's you know, research or a collection of these 20 similar researches. And like, these are all different types of other things that exist. This is where a doctor has sat down and, or, a, or a research team have gone, okay, this is what we've got. Or oh, they've had a thousand people with this date, this problem, you know, a thousand people with MS and we've treated them all in these different ways and how, you know, that's, that's using real data from real people 
to try and look at a yeah. real problem. So or basically, a thousand it, mice were injected with this, and this is yeah, what happened. So basically, uh, what it means is that it's almost the same as clinical trials classifier. Uh, clinical trials classifier is a subset um, of that because, uh, as you can see, there are three types, or three main fields epidemiological, laboratorial, and clinical. So, and that's why they, they're actually um, asking about the, uh, let's see, somewhere here there is, yeah, um, information specific uh, for trials, but then there is in vitro studies and uh, yeah, sample size and all of these things. So basically mm, the first step is classification primary versus uh, secondary research. And um, what they've shared with us is the actual raw data, data set, the full data set of all papers, and then uh, the one that is just primary uh, papers, which means we technically are able to, to reproduce that. Um, the test one from the other, yes. Can we emulate their output from their model with a model of what we've got or with the, the workflow we already have existing? Yeah, and potentially yeah. improve if we find any discrepancy. And potentially improve, um, yeah. And we, we, have, we have a model somewhere, I forget what it's called. Um, Dan shared it with me and I, I, I shot it over to you guys. I forget what it's called. Uh, but that's, so that's why uh, I had pinged, I want to say, is it, was it Emily uh, or Emma um, for their data sets to see, um, I guess, just get a, like a baseline model going, see mm -hmm. how it works out. So, but what it sounds like is that um, actually we got we, we got a much more detailed well it makes sense we got a uh, a much more detailed process from from on, um, was it Andre it was um, yeah from Andre uh, and it's so it's very it's it's very similar to what they are doing um, um, and, and I was you know it makes sense so they're they're looking at it at a at a more macro versus Andre's micro um, yeah. But um, so yeah, the re really similar. Um, yeah, I, I, so I don't know what else we got out of their, I guess, pipeline uh, versus really just what is really, really valuable is the data set that they put together. Yeah, uh, and it is extremely valuable from the perspective of, uh, yeah. if you share your, your screen to that table with yellow things, uh, because I've, I haven't seen such a huge amount of papers annotated with detailed um, with granularity. Yeah. It's because the granularity that matters, yeah. isn't it? The reality is that, and I'm not, I'm pretty sure their model doesn't work on the with including the actual post annotation data set. Because in reality, if you're able to feed the model the, uh, the annotations, you will immediately improve the, the actual uh, high level uh, primary versus non primary classification. So this is also something that we can experiment with. Well, that, that goes back to good quality machine learning should teach itself, shouldn't it? Good quality machine learning should be able to self teach after a certain amount of training. Training. Deep, deep learning might do that. D deep, yeah. So deep learning, um, so using artificial neural networks will do that. Um, uh, so yeah, it depends on the algorithm. Uh, but but um, well, now I'm forgetting, that's so long ago. Um, yeah, so neural nets will do that kind of stuff, the unsupervised models. Uh, yeah, and the thing but, is but, that we, we actually have, uh, you know, the, the Core 19 enriched with all of these uh, embeddings and vectors from SciSpacey, which is pretty much an extra, um, extra data point for us to do much better classification than what they're trying to accomplish on just a raw data set. On just papers. raw, on just raw, yeah. This is just, we don't, they, they are using raw reading out there they're just reading the papers in one big raw lump in what in, we don't know quite know how it's working but it's probably like um read the abstract does the abstract talk about this 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 and this if it talks about this 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 and this it's this if it doesn't mention these things it's probably that it's probably quite a simple logic but it's going to be reading the abstract as a lump whereas our um 
annotation systems runs against loads of ontologies and knows how to simplify things and it knows how to connect them all. So yeah, there's just, there's much more room for refinement in my understanding of L. Yeah, they actually shared the GitHub repo. I see that they have uh, some code in there um, in R, uh, but they mentioned that they haven't uh, shared the classifier because they want to, to improve it first. They have it in a private repo rather than a public one, but we could always look at getting added into the private repo or something if needed. I mean, all, I mean, all we would really need is um, uh, whatever data sets they're using to train their models so that we can then um, add into, uh, include in this, uh, with this, uh, the, the whole um, primary versus non-primary piece. Yeah. Um, and then I think basically we use like, Andre notes from Andre and the the epi that we're going to meet on in the near future that Arthur uh, just set up um, to further develop uh, the interface. Um, then we can use Kamarad's uh, uh, data set to help improve all of that and then just share stuff with Kamarad to help them out. Yeah. And because yeah, then once we've got that, then we can go, we've built this using some of the information you would need and you know, can now you, can you, well, not only test this interface, does it work? Does it tell you the information you need to look at? Does it group things in a way that makes sense to you? And can you run it by your 60, you know, volunteers? And can you, can they give us some sort of feedback as well? Or can we have some conversations with some of them volunteers? Because they have been doing actual annotation. Yeah. So we want to know if our, system that speeds up annotation processes would speed up the process of annotating for them or completely remove a big chunk of the job so then they can actually get on with yeah. trying to understand it. That's an awesome idea. I didn't, I didn't even think about ask, asking them to evaluate what comes out of our model slash interface. That would be awesome, yeah. Because then, we, cause then and not being funny, but their, ex, their internal experts that are evaluating correctness versus, you know, or evaluating when there's, when there's discrepancies, they're already spending time checking human annotation. So if we can get them to check not only an annotation method, but a display method with annotations and with details, and if it makes sense to them, or if there's ways we can improve it to make it make yeah. more sense to them, then then we're only saving everyone work in the long run. So we're building, yeah. helping them build their annotation building model, but we're actually also using what they've done for annotations to teach us how to better display information. Um, I gotta go through, I gotta go through all their literature because it's like, so they're doing research on researchers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so they're, they're, they're assessing research methodology. They're kind of research ops. I mean, that's essentially what uh, literature review is uh, yeah. In, yeah. in the high level. I'm not sure if, Matan, you've seen this first iteration of kind of like the, the web app that we've crafted just to explore what um, that group of researchers on Kaggle was producing. But basically, this is a, a you can go on coronamad.org. It's already connected to the domain. And what you will see is a collection of key scientific questions that are itself uh, researchers that m went through the papers and manually uh, extracted all this information. So it's the same process that these guys are doing. And there are more and more groups that are doing this manually. And we just stumbled on, on the one that is very open to collaborate. But essentially, if we help the, uh, these guys, we can scale it to all the other uh, subgroups that are working on this privately. And, and, then, and then we can reduce the, we can hopefully reduce all the graph that's going into the older manual annotations. And we can concentrate that manual annotation effort into knowledge management, which is much more important and much more valuable in the long term. And we can not only do the, 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 the slow, grind of actually bringing all the information. But if some of them people are willing to actually look at a machine written version of it, then their, their, their intellectual horsepower is used in a place that's more useful and can classify if we're doing a good job or not. 
and the more people involved with that, the more effective it is. And then once we start to understand that effectiveness, we can start thinking about how we would use the same uh, hardware and systems in other disciplines. And then we start getting into a point where we're, we're, we're major effects on like the research methodology. Yeah. So, I mean, especially evidence-based scientific disciplines like medicine. Let's do this. Uh, let's explore their uh, data set. Let's um, compile. Well, we can use this document that Yumatan created to start um, assembling questions for them. Uh, let's get their data into Dataverse and basically um, start unbundling specific parts of the workflow. I'm going to share the workflow document in a second. I just realized it. Uh, I haven't. And we can start from there. Okay. I totted up the amount of tabs I had open or saved. It's 314 right now. <laughs> Let's see. Great. 314. Uh, Over about 20 different windows. I don't know if I can count. You guys use <laughs> using this, uh, I'll show you. Um, am I doing this? Um, I got this plugin um, for Chrome and uh, so like I could freeze tabs um, and then save windows. This thing yeah, I've got something called Wakona. I'll show you it. Yeah. It works really nicely because you can actually name windows and they do and it freezes automatically when you switch between windows. So it only ever has the window you're using. Yeah. And then I have tab tabs closed as well. So okay. I end up with you guys so I can have hundreds and hundreds level. open. Next level. This I, so actually I got to the point where so this this is uh definitely better than nothing. Um but it's a little bit clunky and it's missing things that I really want to have. So I've been playing around with Obsidian. I decided that I was gonna start my own um so so uh knowledge management kind of graph with uh the uh, like a link blog but I wanted to have, because like if you paste a link, it's like you have to read the link then to find out what it is, right? So I, so I'm, so now I'm looking yeah. into doing little HTML deal. I want to have a thumbnail and then, um, uh, and then the link. Um, uh, I won't to, mind, but right now, Wakona's actually got some bug in oh, it oh, and oh. the most recent patch of it. Yeah. But this is you great. can group them I'm by new, you can, you can, you can make, you can make a, like, a new section. Like I've, career bear one yeah. like generals various things like corona why has got his own little section and it's on and when you actually click on them you can have the tabs and you can have saved things inside it so they don't have to be open yeah. but they can be they can be like things that are important to this space of my brain and you can save them there but they, that right. way you can get to them when you need to but they don't necessarily have to be open I, i've still not got to the discipline of actually closing more things and saving them yeah so i ended up with absolutely loads and loads and loads i mean like so and then i get like event this is like workshops and classes that i've been so sometimes it's if a case of i'm in somewhere and i just open loads and loads and loads and loads of tabs because i know i can get to them at another point and just tidy it away yeah. and every now and then i'll just go through and just blitz and tidy stuff next like, product we're building is research. the chrome tab ai powered chrome yeah. tab review <laughs> yeah well actually see so, so you know chrome is finally coming out with better tab management you're going to be able to i felt uh, it is so and, bad on memory it eats memory yeah. like it's not yeah. even fair yeah i've got 16 gig and it still makes it cry yeah that's why like I, i'm terrible about it like i i like at the end of the night i'll put everything in this you know th this my um my link or tab management deal, uh, I'll close it down. And then next morning I'll start everything up, open all the tabs, but freeze them. Right. But it's like, you know, 50% yeah. of those tabs you're never going to go back to. So why am I bothered? But I'm like, I need it. I have to have it just in case, you know? Yeah. I've, um, I've, it's the engineer's mindset. I'll have to keep everything around just in yeah. case I actually need it. I mean, I'm getting better at like, you say that, but I've got like, let me just show you again. Cause I've got that many fucking tabs. It's not even yeah. funny. Cause it's like, uh, in, in like doing, doing what we're doing. It's like, you're, you're never going to be able to remember every little, 
Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you compare about... it to like I have like tabs, boxes in boxes, yeah. and yeah. folders in folders. Yeah. I mean, like my UX one's gone crazy. So I'm getting better yeah. at just saving stuff. And then that don't count into the fact that like on my Facebook, I've got probably 200 links saved on it. On my LinkedIn, I've probably got like 50, and that's only because I've started this year. I mean, at one point, years ago, I had a delicious, I had, do you guys ever remember Delicious? Which was like no. a, yeah. A, it was like a, a, a yeah, a link, a, a link sharing system before yeah. uh, browsers could synchronize stuff. So you could end up with saving links across. And I had fucking hundreds in that, hundreds and hundreds of things saved that I just never <laughs> went back to sometimes. I love your accent. It's like I'm watching a movie right now. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> hundreds of tabs saved on that. It's not even funny. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm an absolute hoarder of information. It's, but hoarder. it's um, like a hu- a huge piece of of um being productive and not productive, but but accomplishing things today. It's about or just being organized, editing. right? Yeah, and editing and, that. Yeah, editing editing your time and making sure you can find yeah, things when you right, need it. Right. So it's like if you can create a system. And there's a hundred, there's hundreds of them out there, but it's all almost like they're almost like micro services, right? So if you can create a system, right, like these, uh, like this, um, not um, like the knowledge management graphs with backlinks, right? So you say like, like I read an article three years ago, and I feel like there's an answer there. There's uh, so if you can like just click through those links in your own knowledge management system, right, you'll arrive at a solution much quicker. Um, where other people have you guys might not seen? Think. Have you guys seen Rome? Rome recently. Oh, yeah, um, it's insane. It's, yeah, I mean, I, so, I, I love it mostly because it's the, the most insane organization of. I mean, it, when I look at things like that, I'm, I look at things I'm like, yes, something that works like my brain. But then I also go, oh, yeah, but I'm too lazy to actually do it. <laughs> too lazy to actually use the thing exactly. that would actually save That's my the brain. Challenge. So they, um, there was some kind of silly like waiting period. I tried to sign up for it and they told me like I had to wait or whatever. So that's when oh, yeah. I started working with uh, Obsidian because it's supposed to be the same thing. Main difference being a room, everything is uh, viewable and editable on the internet. But um, with Obsidian, everything local in more. Um, but then you have to get like. I mean, room Notion and starting to, like I've seen a few people using Notion like a, 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 a an external brain for lack of a better but it, word. Does, it doesn't have that whole backlink and like um what do they call it i gotta open it up now it's all that about whole, associations like, um, and yeah like yeah. relationships yeah. between the data and linked data right. and yeah knowledge I, management or knowledge graphing yeah. it's about knowledge graphing um, things together the weird associations that exist and making them all make sense to each other is how my brain works gra- the graph the graph view that's what it's all the graph and no shit, no shit. And it's also it's well, it's only recently been free for because uh, for a long time it used to cost money, and then they realised that they were literally making people not use it. So, wow. Um, so, do you guys so want to? Um, uh, do you guys want to use Notion for um, for for this collaboration with um, Camarades? Let's try. Up? I actually created Notion for um, Corona Y. Um, if you use okay. the team at Corona um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I'm in a Corona Y Notion group that uh, Anton made, I think. Mm. I'd have to find it. There's one thing that I quite like about this um, work corner thing, though. It's got like, it's got a Notion tab built into it that you can actually log on to your notion and just use it and make notion note, notes inside it i also downloaded a, a toolbar thing recently called what was that called uh, uh, world brain memex nice and it's again it's you can and a little bit like how um hypothesis lets you make notes from anywhere on the internet uh Memex is the same thing where you can literally like copy notes on save notes wherever you are on the internet and it, and it tells you where it was, which is just another yeah, way but of... Let's try to, to use Notion. Um, I'm just going to share the account with um, two of you right now. Um, unless we can use the one that Anton created. I, I'm just a newbie Notion user, so I, I have no clue. 
Um, well, I've, well, it's it's a group because he sent me a link and he's set it up and added me to it. So if that's the case, I might be able to add other people. Yeah, that if way you it's, can, it's um, like a... that. If you can't, uh, let's use the one team at coronawide.org. And let's start putting things into that uh, page for Camarades. And I'll, I'll take some more time to uh, digest the, the workflow document. And let's basically start compiling, compiling the questions that we have for them. Sounds like a plan? Yeah. All right. Perfect. I'll have to jump off. But it was great to chat with you guys, actually. So. Um, yeah, you too. Let's let's do these more often. <laughs> yeah. Just actual human conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> life life challenges. Yeah. All right. Sounds yeah, good, guys. Um, if you if you just stop burning yourself out, Arthur. Arthur, stop burning yourself out. Stop stop stressing yourself and ask for help if you need it. People will help. You just need to tell us when you need help because we can't get inside your head and work it out for ourselves. And be more visible in, you know, you're going through, you're doing lots of calls yourself and that's fine, but share it out, man. Just say that people, you know, I'm happy to join where I can, but I need to know they exist, otherwise I can't help you. Yeah, I'm trying to improve with that actually with the group calendar. Uh, as you can see, you know, this week, uh, people were receiving a lot more of these and as a result we got you know 20 30 40 people joining in so super um, needed but yeah I, I really appreciate you saying that so let's let's improve on that stop stressing yourself out stop burning yourself out neither one of them is helpful for anyone including yourself yeah you too guys yep. all right thank you so stop much guys. bye bye take care bye